Welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti. My guest this evening is Eric Hammerling, who's the executive director of the Connecticut Forest and Park Association. Well, my friend. It's great to see you, Pete. How are you? I am doing very well. Thanks for having while. me. It has been. It has been. But always a pleasure to be it with is. you in it person. Is. It is. It is. What's new with CFPA? Oh, there's a lot new. There's a lot new. <laughs> I mean, this is actually an exciting time of year for, for me because, um, you know, I'm both the executive director and the director of policy for uh, CFPA. Mm -hmm. And the legislative session started that first weekend in January yes, and it'll did. run through uh, early June. Right. This is the time of the year where there are a lot of ideas bubbling up of and course. some of them are good. Um, and hmm. some of them are not good. <laughs> hmm. And so we always have to do a lot of work to try to figure out uh, what are these concepts about. And right. uh, there, we've already had a couple public hearings that we've uh, testified at on various bills. Okay. Um, and I'm excited about the potential for uh, what's going to happen this year. As you know, I tend to be an optimist, and right. I think to do things um, in Hartford uh, consistently, you have to be an optimist because um, you just you know that sometimes the first time you try something, it's not going to work, but you have to just keep on going again and again and again. And uh, having an organization like CFPA, where I've been now for 15 years. That's right. Um, and is the oldest uh, nonprofit conservation organization in the state, okay. we have staying power. So we will be back every year to try to make sure that good things are happening for forest parks and trails. So that's, okay. that's my mission and uh, I'm sticking to it. There you go, there you go. So what, what are some of the hot item topics for this legislative session with CFPA up at the Capitol? Well, so I, I mentioned forest parks and trails, so I'll kind of take it in that order. So okay. in, with forests, um, we're, we're excited because there are a few things that have been uh, done over the last few years to kind of lay the groundwork for where I hope we will take some big steps uh, very soon. Uh, in 2020, the Governor's Council on Climate Change uh, brought together a number of different reports, and mm -hmm. I chaired the report that uh, published a forest uh, subgroup report with That's a lot of right. recommendations. Recommendations. Uh, this past year, there was a second report on forests that uh, we, we call the Perfect Future Report, which okay. is the policy on resilient forests for Connecticut's future, perfect future. Right. And uh, there are some recommendations there that we think are going to be raised in some bills this year uh, and perhaps get some traction. One of the um, ideas that we're hoping will uh, take root, so to speak, on yeah. forests um, is, uh, you know, an, an issue called Called no net loss of forests. Okay. And there, there are two states right now, in Maryland and New Jersey, right. that have uh, no net loss of forest policies that have been in place actually for uh, for 20 years. And what those do is we say, you know, as a state, we we like our forests. We right. want to have forests in right. the future. And how can we take actions on a bunch of different fronts to try to make sure we have healthy forests in the future? So. Right. I, I, you know, one side of the, the ledger, it's we want to plant new forests. So we're always yeah. thinking about planting trees and what will the future forest look like. And then the other side, we're looking at, so sometimes there are trees that are unhealthy and might need to be removed. Right. How do we make sure that uh, Connecticut is made whole when we have to remove trees? So. Okay. Um, and it, it, so think about uh, what New Jersey has done with, um, mm -hmm. we will call it compensatory reforestation, okay. meaning they're compensating the public when they have to lose trees in New Jersey. Um, you've probably noticed from time to time there are trees removed along our state highways. Mm -hmm. And that always is such a jarring change, right? right? In New Jersey, when they remove trees along state highways, they are um, responsible under their law for replanting trees. Uh, right. They might be along the highway, they might be in neighboring communities. In Connecticut, we have nothing like that that requires no. a replanting of trees. So when our trees are lost along roadsides, they're often just 
a loss. So the no net loss of forest concept is all about how do we make sure it's not just a, a loss? How do we make sure that we have a gain that's going to balance that out? So um, where there are a few different uh, bills related to no net loss of forests that are being considered right now. Some of them have to do with um, when trees might be removed by the state or by utilities, right. uh, re requirements of replanting. There's also, um, you know, a few different bills that are uh, looking at things like, um, you know, climate change. Of course, we're yeah. we're paying. We're, we're, you know, th this is uh, the the world that we live in, right? right. So we want to make sure that climate uh, is addressed in some uh, way, shape, or form. And trees are a really important uh, asset when we're talking about. You know, they hold carbon. They they you know uh, store it yeah. uh, in in their roots, uh, in, in the soil around them, in their in their trunks, and in the, in, even in their leaves. So how do we make sure that uh, we, we have uh, trees that are uh, doing what they need to do? Right. Part of that is replanting and you know, uh, yeah. replacing, like I said. Sure. But also, it's paying attention to our trees in ways that we pay attention to other things. So right now, um, under the law, it's called the Global Warming Solutions Act. Okay. Um, that is the law that says we have to, you know, reduce emissions from tr the transportation sector, yeah. from the energy production center, from the housing sector, and there are several things that we can do there. So we pay attention through that that act just to emissions, things that are being sent up into the atmosphere. Right. Um, we have, uh, we and, and others are saying you should, shouldn't just be thinking about the emissions side of the ledger. You should also be thinking about what's called negative emissions. Mm -hmm. Those are um, greenhouse gases that are absorbed and stored in forests, on farmland, in open spaces. Um, and uh, we could be the first state to start an inventory of you know thinking about what carbon we are retaining on land. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? Well, once you start paying attention and measuring and saying we want to try to increase that over time, well then you put into place policies and investments that make sure you do that. So uh, that's another thing that we want to make sure that, um, is considered. And uh, we, again, we're hopeful that that's a concept that's going to be raised this year. OK. What else? So that so that's for us. Uh, you know, parks, yeah, right. um, you know, it always starts with trying to protect the passport to the parks. Mm -hmm. And the passport to the parks is a great program uh, for the it. public. We've talked about That's it right. before, right? It went That's into right. effect uh, in 2018. So it's a, still a relatively new program. But what the passport to the parks does is now, if you have a uh, Connecticut license plate on your car, yeah. You don't have to pay at the gates anymore to okay. get into state parks. So it's uh, in terms of an equity and access issue, it ensures that anyone who wants to go to a state park uh, can do that. Mm. But unfortunately, no. <laughs> there have been proposals to um, divert funding from that program or exempt certain users oh. from having to pay uh, the fee that helps to fund the program, okay. and the, the fee is something that you know. Whenever uh, people uh, register or re-register their vehicles, yep. they pay a five dollar per vehicle fee, right. Right. Um, which together um, generates about twenty million dollars a year mm -hmm. for operating and maintaining state parks. And in return for us paying that five dollar per year fee right. per vehicle. Um, we also get the free access to parks and uh, the knowledge that our funding is going to help maintain them. So we have to protect that uh, yeah. very important Absolutely. Program. We also have to make sure that there are enough people at working at parks to take care of them. Oh, yeah. And unfortunately, as a state, we have not done well on that front. Um, and I was doing some uh, research into this recently. Did you know that uh, in the early 1980s, we had over 200 full-time staff working for our state parks? And we have 110 state parks and a lot of facilities yeah. associated with them. So we had, 100, we had two, over 200 full-time staff. Today, okay. we have 83. 
Um, really? And we, wow. at the same time that we have less than half the staff, we actually have more than double the visitation to state parks really? happening at the same time. Wow. You know, back in the 1980s, about uh, 7 million people uh, were documented going to state parks. In 2021, the most recent year that they have stats for, over 17 million people visited state parks. Wow. It's become the you know number one visitation, uh, uh, most visited attraction in Connecticut is our state parks. Absolutely. So you know we have to make sure that we have enough people to make sure those parks are you know open for the public, um, and are well maintained and are safe. And if we don't have enough people, we're going to be running into problems, especially with the great pressure that all that visitation has created. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Now let's talk about bonding for recreation trails at the Open Space Grant. Yeah, well, the, this last year um, was a wonderful year for, uh, you know, for bonding um, from, you know, the, the, the governor convenes the bond commission. They uh, allow the state to spend money on various things. Okay. And there was the actually the largest investments ever in both recreational trails and state park infrastructure and open space this last July. Mm -hmm. um, now that's great, but we have to make sure it's not just a one-time investment. Right, exactly. So we want to make sure that that uh, continues. Um, just you know, the one that got a lot of attention, rightfully so, was the investment in state park infrastructure, meaning like caring for the buildings right. and making sure Rocky Neck that needs you know all this work yeah, to yeah. keep it up up to uh, snuff is is actually paid for. Absolutely. Well, they um, so they supported through the bond commission and also through the budget almost $52 million for state park infrastructure, okay. which again is great, um, but they've also documented that the need for investments in our state park buildings uh, and related infrastructure is over 300 million. So right. again, it's like great start, let's keep it going and uh, let's keep chipping away. Absolutely, Eric, would you mind sticking around for another segment? I'd be happy to. We'll be right back. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! kids put skis on as they were learning to walk. I want my kids to be able to have those moments with their kids. Being a scientist, I'm worried about climate change in so many different ways for my kids. From the second you have a child, you want to do everything to protect them. I think our action on climate change is no different. It's just an extension of being a mom. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti sitting here with Eric Hammerling, who's the executive director of the Connecticut Forest and Park Association. Welcome back, sir. Thank you. You got it. All right, let's see. So where were we? So, uh, so we talked about we were forests, we talked about parks. Okay. So let's talk about trails a little bit. Yeah, there um, you go. And you, you know that uh, I've got a real soft spot for trails. Oh, yes, trails. you do. Uh, and Connecticut it has some amazing trails. Mm -hmm. um, and really, you know, over the last few years uh, during, you know, COVID, it's incredible how much use those trails were getting and yeah. uh, forests and parks as well. Um, and, you know, at... CFPA, we are responsible for maintaining almost 900 miles of blue blazed hiking trails That's all right. around the state, That's right? right? And th those go through six, uh, 96 towns all around the state, and we work with amazing volunteers and some great staff and an awesome uh, trails crew that we uh, actually, you know, pay to be able to do uh, big projects. Uh, and, and we're going into our sixth year of having a trails crew that we're also trying to grow. And uh, right now the state actually has, you know, thanks to the bonding that happened last year for mm -hmm. trails, which is $9 million uh, more than 
uh, you know, double what they've put out at one time before. Oh, wow. Um, they have a requ request for proposals for, uh, you know, municipalities, for nonprofit yep. groups, uh, for uh, water companies and others who have trails, who want to make them better, who want to invest in, you know, the bridges and the boardwalks and the things that make them really accessible for people. Mm -hmm. um, they're uh, expecting to have a, a big response to their request for proposals. Um, just a couple of years ago, when there was only $3 million available for, for trails projects, they received over $25 million in requests. So, oh, wow. um, so we're hoping that the $9 million will help to um, get more things done uh, out, out in the world. And of course, you know, how could I talk about trails without also talking about Connecticut Trails Day? You Which just is. blew my opening. <laughs> I, that's it. I'm so I'm, sorry. I give did up. I, that's I, it. I'm I done. Too, too I'm well. done. <laughs> I, I know you too well, Pete. So, well, with, with Trails Day, I mean, that that is uh, kind of a marquee event for right. uh, Connecticut Forest and Park Association. You know, we've been uh, hosting it, uh, you know, in Connecticut since its very beginning. And this is a pretty significant birthday for the, the Connecticut Trails Day. I believe right, it's Pete? 30. Yes, I believe. absolutely. Last time I checked. Yes, so this is the 30-year <laughs> anniversary right. of uh, Connecticut Trails Day. And actually, every year for, for 30 years, there have been more events that take place in Connecticut on Connecticut Trails Day. And, and we say Trails Day, but it's really Trails Weekend, yep. uh, June 3rd and 4th this year. Um, mm -hmm. It is the largest celebration of Trails Day that happens anywhere in the country. And this last year, we had uh, 200 events that were happening all around the state on various trails, right. different activities, uh, not just walking, but you know, biking and equestrian and even paddling on really? you know uh, what some people will call the other blue trails, you know, right. going through uh, the waterways. Um, my my favorite event that uh, is uh, one that. Our good friend Claire Kane, who's, absolutely, who's CFPS, absolutely, uh, uh, trails director, did a few years back where and people get creative with their Trails Day um, events. Really, she did a kazoo walk, a kazoo walk. Yes, no a way. kazoo walk. She um, brought twenty-five kazoos. <laughs> Um, she had a great turnout at this walk um, that I think was, you know, in uh, the Niantic area. Okay. And uh, people would, at places along the trail, mm -hmm. be inspired to uh, do a little kazoo playing. Really? So, um, so, so you never know on Connecticut Trails Day what kind of fun <laughs> you events you're going to run what's across. Gonna show up. <laughs> now, I'm assuming during Connecticut Trails Day, with all it's being spread out all across the state, you never know what's gonna show up. I'm assuming you show up at one location I do. Two. Well, I, I usually go to four, sometimes five events over the weekend. Right. You know, I try to kind of be as, space it out. as many places as I can. And we hear, um, you know, every year, some frustration from folks who are like, oh, the, you know, 200 events, I can't get to everything. There's so many things <laughs> I wasn't able to do. But, you know, the, there's always next year. Yep. And, um, you know, you can see where these 200 events are because every event has a listing that tells you, you know, here's a person who knows Ooh, a lot about this area, line, yeah. here's where it was, um, and you can go back to these places. You could use the maps that were generated for that weekend any time of the year. Right. So you could, you know, anyone could go on. We, we actually, um, we bought the URL trailsday.org okay. um, because, you know, why, why just do Connecticut Trails Day? Right. Mm -hmm. Trails Day. Exactly. Um, and so you can go on there and see uh, this last year, all the things that happened in 2022 is some ideas. And then soon at uh, the beginning of March, we'll be opening up looking towards 2023 and all the events that are gonna happen this year. So nice. yeah, it's exciting. And we still haven't figured out exactly how to have the big bash for the 30th anniversary be special. That's right. So I you think you've got party. some ideas. Yeah. We, uh -oh. We've got to think about a, a party in the okay. appropriate way. So maybe, maybe it will be a cookout this year. Yeah, there you go. Who knows? Who knows? There you go. 
trails, brews, and barbecue. Uh, well, we we've already you know <laughs> played with the you know the the ales for trails. Yes, and the brews and views. Uh -huh. Like we're we're doing those kinds of things. We'll, we'll have some fun with it for sure. Okay. But um, but yeah, if we, something about the thirtieth anniversary. We just we do have to do something special. Uh, no, absolutely, absolutely. So. What else, what else we want to? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, um, you know, one thing that, um, you know, we are all kind of wondering what's going to happen about mm -hmm. um, the issue of bears. You want to talk about bears? Let's talk about there's bears. A, <laughs> there's, a, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, publicity around, you know, <laughs> what to do about Connecticut's, Connecticut's growing bear population. Um, and in some places, maybe maybe not in Clinton or you know right here, right. there are uh, lots of bears and lots of people, right. and there have been some bear people encounters, right? Yes, um, I've seen them on the news. You've seen them on the news, right? right. Bear shows up in someone's kitchen exactly. wanting some pie. That's a tough situation to exactly. deal with, right? And the, the issue that uh, people are really wrestling with is, um, you know, w what to do. Right. I, I would say, um, you know, the, the more space we have for bears to be bears and not have to worry about people, the better off we're going to be. Right. The better we are also of dealing with our bird feed bird feeders and mm -hmm. trash right. and other things like that, the better off we're going to be. Um, and with so many of these types of issues, um, you know, the bears are just doing what they do, right? Yeah. They're trying to find food. Uh, yeah. They're trying to get some comfort. Heck, I like pie, too. I, I don't blame the bears at all for that. Oh, of course not. Um, but, you know, hopefully we're going to be able to find a, a solution because we, we do have that uh, collision course happening. Right. Now, um, I don't think it's going to be um, anything like uh, <laughs> you've seen that that new movie coming out, uh, Cocaine Bear. <laughs> I've seen the trailer um, for it. <laughs> that that yeah. could be um, something special. We, we don't expect that's right. going to happen no, in no, Connecticut. No. But we, we do think that there needs to be a, um, a comprehensive solution, not just uh, what some have proposed is, uh, you know, a bear hunting season or anything like that. Right. Uh, it's more to make sure that we are thinking about how can we uh, reduce those interactions uh, safely um, and also enjoy being a state that has a bear population, mm -hmm. which I think is, you know, that's an exciting thing about Connecticut. No, absolutely. So, so, so anything, any other hot water you want to get me in? No. Uh, <laughs> <these? laughs> well, there is. What about tales and trails, like stories of the tales and the trails? Yeah, yeah. Well, so we, we actually, we got a grant um, a few years back uh, from the Department of e Economic and Community Development to do just that. It was Tales from the Trails. Really? It wasn't tales of ales and trails or <laughs> brews and views and tales and trails. It was so uh, I gotta tales from the trails. Tales, trails, ales. <laughs> and when we actually created uh, 10 videos that okay. you can uh, see on CFPA's YouTube page okay. that talk about different trails and things to do when you get there and with some really nice footage. Um, we're always trying to make it easier for people to access the outdoors. Okay. Um, and that might be one of the, the last things yeah. we, we talk about, which is, um, you know, Connecticut, um, and not just Connecticut, but really many states are wrestling with, you know, how do we make sure the outdoors are there for everyone? Right. Um, and there really is a, um, you know, historically um, a disconnect between and obstacles put in the way of people of color uh, accessing the yes. outdoors. So that's one of the things that's really important to our organization is to make sure that any of the obstacles to enjoying the outdoors are removed as right. much as we can. That doesn't mean that everyone is going to all of a sudden want to go on a walk in the woods. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to make sure that people feel welcome right. um, when they are on the trails anywhere in the state. Absolutely. So that's something we, we have a, a fantastic advisory council that we're working with. Okay. Um, on kind of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion issues. 
and we feel like we're really making some uh, some gains there, and want to make sure that um, you know n no one ever feels like they um, aren't welcome on on the blue trails at the very least. Exactly. And what, if people want more information on CFPA, where can they go and what can they find on the website? Yeah, well, they can go to our website, which is ctwoodlands.org. Right. Um, lots of information about how to support the organization, uh, join as a, a member or volunteer, right. um, and learn about different events coming up like Trails Day. Absolutely. And I'm sure as the time gets closer, you're going to update the website on Trails Day, what's going on, keep everything keep everybody abreast of what's going on up at the Capitol because I'm assuming you're there. Oh yeah, we're there a lot, <laughs> um, as, as much as you, you need to be. If you right. wanna make a difference, you, you gotta be, as they say, yeah. um, either you're at the table or you're on the menu. Exactly. So we wanna make sure we're at the table when these issues come up. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We got a little, we got about a couple, we got a little bit more time left. So what do you, website and people can find information on the organization and all that other. Yeah, well, you know, one of the things that uh, we really do depend on to yeah. be successful is amazing volunteers. Right. And I, I do want to, you know, definitely put a shout out right. to our incredible volunteers who are working uh, collectively, you know, uh, about 20,000 hours a year okay. are dedicated by individuals who are working on trails all around the state, um, as well as working to support our uh, education programs and other things. So um, find out how to volunteer uh, at that website. And I can just tell you that, um, you know, we value our volunteers. We thank them. Uh, their, their hearts mm -hmm. are uh, enormous. Um, and they are really making a difference. So um, we try to make sure they also have a good time. Eric Hammerling from CFPA. Thanks for some time, my friend. We'll see you soon. Pleasure. You uh, thanks it. for having me. Thanks, Eric. On behalf of Eric Hammerling, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night, and we'll see you next time.